Welcome to week five, in which we discuss data in business processes. I'd like to start with providing you an overview of the videos we will discuss during this week. In the first video, we take a, quite a high-level view on the topic uh, called organizing process models. Here we see that when we look at organizational business processes, we have some relationship, supplier-customer relationship uh, between different process models and we investigate this in video clip 5.1. 5.2 looks at the level of BPMN process models. So we um, investigate how we can represent data objects in BPMN and also data flow, the flow of data through the process in BPMN. Uh, data has implications on the process execution semantics. We call that uh, video 5.3 data execution semantics. 5.4 looks at structured data and, uh, and sub-processes, while in uh, video clip 5.5 we look at a correctness criterion between data and processes, and this criterion is called object lifecycle conformance. So let's start with video clip 5.1. Earlier in this course, we took a look at process landscape. So a process landscape is an, an arrangement of all the organizational business processes. So organizational business processes are the big chunks of uh, functionality, the big areas where processes are um, organized in, an <clears throat> in a company or another organization. And when we look at the relationships between these organizational processes, so for instance, when we look at the innovation process that is used for creating new things, creating innovation in, in, the, in this company, in this production company that we have been looking at. And on the other hand, we look at the product development process, we see a, a relationship. This is represented by this arrow and the arrow is marked, it's labeled with the uh, word prototype. So that means that the innovation process creates a prototype. The prototype is then used as input for the product development process so that um, it, can, it can work properly. And we have also between the other organizational business processes, we have a number of these types of dependencies. So between product planning and product development, we have the product specification that is created by product planning and used by product development. So we have this um, supplier-customer relationship between organizational business processes. And it turns out that that is not only the case between these very high-level organizational business processes, but also between the operational business processes that we typically represent in BPMN. All right, so some background organizational business processes are often decomposed in a set of operational business processes that are uh, can be performed sequentially, um, not always performed sequentially, but sometimes we have the sequence. Um, and these processes, in a se there's a reason for this sequence. The reason being, well, that um, the first process creates something that the second uses, the second creates something that the third uses, and so forth. So there is a causal um, relationship between, between these uh, processes, and this relationship um, leads to the sequential execution of the um, of these processes. We have an example and the example is that of a procurement process. So here we have the procurement process, so big chunk process uh, represented by the chevron symbol. We often um, use this or we often see um, the use of this symbol to represent um, you know, large processes and also when we look at a particular process from the outside. So here on the second level, so this procurement process works like follows. First, I'll have a, I have a process that invites quotes. So um, first of all, there's a specification on what uh, type of products should be, uh, should be procured here. And then I send out a number of um, requests for quotes. I get the quotes back. So all these activities, you can, you can imagine a BPMN process lying underneath. Um, this symbol, and that is called then invite quotes, or business process invite quotes. When the quotes are, when we have the quotes, we compare the quotes and we analyze also the supplier of the quotes. Maybe there is a bad experience with a certain supplier that I would not choose the next time. Um, I, would, I would not, I would rather not use this particular supplier. 
So we compare the quotes and analyze the supplier. In the next process, we um, choose the supplier and issue the order. So we take the decision on which supplier to take. And afterwards, there is the receive goods process. So if we now look at these uh, four processes, we again have the supplier um, consumer or supplier customer relationship between these processes. We have it um, always between two of the two of the processes. So the invite invite quotes and compare quotes and analyze suppliers. These two processes. Well, the first one uh, comes up with a with a set of quotes that were received. This set of quotes are then given to the next. Uh, process, compare quotes. Now the quotes are compared and uh, there is maybe a short list is being produced. This information is then given, so the quotes together with the analysis of the suppliers is then given to the choose supplier and issue order. So where the decision is taken based on the, um, on the orders and also um, on the information about the suppliers the decision is taken, the order is um, issued and then afterwards the, we receive the goods and of course to receive the goods I need to know exactly which goods have been ordered by which supplier for which price and so forth. So we see the supplier customer relationship also between um, these processes on the more technical level. All right, so we formulate this as an observation. So each business process produces results that are used by the next process in the sequence. These dependencies realize a supplier-customer um, relationship. There are a number of consequences that go in line with this. So each business process has at least one customer. It is the customer of at least one other process. So when we have a process that does not have any customer, we probably don't need the process. When we um, have a process that requires input, but there's no, there's no other process that provides the input, there's also a problem. So we can use also this information to get a better understanding of the relationship between these processes. All right, here we have a more abstract view. So in the middle, there is the process. And here we say, well, the, the process consumes what is provided by the supplier, for instance, quotes in the previous example, and the process produces um, something that is then used by the customer process and the process provides results, for instance, a supplier shortlist in this, um, in this procurement example. All right. And this, um, let's say, we, we define process interface as being exactly um, the, um, the, the handover position between the supplier process and the customer process. So the results produced by one process, the supplier, and consumed by another process, the customer, define the process interface between these two. And the process interface must be well defined and must also be measurable. Well defined must be precisely clear what the, um, what the customer process needs from the supplier process. What, is exactly, um, what do I exactly need to fulfill um, the goal, to fulfill my goal. We learned that business processes have a goal and in order to be able to fulfill the goal, the processes need input, need the results produced by the supplier process. An example would be, um, let's look at the results of the invite quotes process. So we now look at this interface uh, between invite quotes and compare quotes and analyze the supplier. Uh, we, we can specify that we need a list of three to six quotes with information about supplier, cost, date of delivery, for instance. So quite, well, that's not quite detailed, but in reality we would go much more into detail what we really expect from this. All right, um, we now talked only about individual processes and we had the impression that these processes are all inside of one company, at least my example indicated that. Um, that's true, that's one possibility, but the other possibility is that the customer of one of my processes is, well, is the real customer, is the customer that I'm making business with, so a business partner. Or that a supplier is a real supplier that provides um, goods to me so that I can, whatever, um, do my work. And so we have this distinction that results can be provided by external suppliers. 
These are different organizations and business partners, or by internal suppliers. Internal suppliers can be different departments of the same company. We have seen already that in BPMN suppliers can be uh, uh, suppliers, of course, can be expressed by pools and lanes. In operational business processes, not only suppliers, but um, uh, also, of course, the customer process, all the business partners around can be expressed by uh, pools and the internal structure of the organization can then be expressed by lanes. So we can also use pools and lanes here. Regarding process interfaces, there is, a, there is an important principle to, um, to take care about and that is the principle that processes are conducted to produce <coughs> defined some results, some defined result. Results are always <coughs> created for a customer process. That might be an inter internal customer process or also an external customer. The quality of produced results is only determined by the requirements of the customer process. So the customer process always is, always is important to um, stress his role as providing the requirements for what I actually need to deliver. The outcome of a process shall be exactly what is actually required by the customer process. All right, let's, let's take an external view about the requirements and the results. So maybe we should come back to this uh, bike um, example. So um, in one of the, of the earlier uh, videos, I discussed this bike example where we had a company and the company um, has customers on the one hand side and suppliers on the, on the other hand side. And let's discuss the relationships with these relationships between um, these business partners on that level using, using this bike example. So let's start with the external customer that um, has customer requirements. So that has requirements on a specific custom-made bike, for instance. So there are customer requirements that are imposed by the external customer on the results. So I exactly say which are the results. So this is the bike that is then transferred. This is the, the, a bike that I've been ordering and the bike of course needs to fulfill my requirements. Exactly say which, which brand, which type, which uh, components and so forth. But these requirements also have implications on how the company, uh, what the company should produce. So um, this is here also, this is here represented by this dotted arrow. Now the bike company needs to, of course, build, custom build this uh, bike and also has requirements is um, the customer of the suppliers. So there are customer requirements, I need a certain frame, I need to order certain um, bike components and so forth. And here we have external supplier, in general we have more than one, but in this figure we just look at one, that should provide the, the frame, the bike frame, that is the result and the customer requirements, that is the requirements of this company are then transferred here, are used then to specify exactly which, uh, which bike frame, for instance, I, um, I need to receive. And that also, of course, provides information about what are the requirements on the external supplier, which, um, which bike frame should be produced at that point in time. This is the external view where we have just looked at the company uh, as a black box and we do not look uh, inside of the company. But here we see that that also holds for the company. So the company produces results from suppliers and produces results from customers. And only the customer always specifies what needs to be produced. So the, the, um, the customer, the, the end customer of the bike specifies by requirements what uh, should be produced and the bike company gives requirements on the um, to the external suppliers so that the external suppliers know exactly what to provide. This is the external view but we also can have an internal view. We'll have the internal view on this slide. Um, here the external situation is exactly the same as before but we somehow zoom into the internal area and here we, say, we see that each process acts both as an internal customer and internal supplier. So here, um, so the results, so the frame comes in, there's a customer and the frame somehow is, um, there's some, some work going on to, let's say, um, to come from the frame to the bike, so maybe some, some parts are already attached to the frame, something like that. 
and that is now given to the next process that acts as an internal um, customer but also as an internal supplier to the follow-up process and the results are then provided here. So again the third process, internal customer, internal supplier. The results are given to the external customer, so that's, that is, um, that's the bike that is provided there. And here we also see that the internal processes, the business processes inter inside of this company, have dependencies, have internal requirements on the results that are transferred and thereby also on, this, on the previous um, process in line. And that is, uh, the idea um, is also, um, also uh, quite nicely and well presented in a book by Führmann and uh, Damage, a German book. Um, we'll provide a reference to that as well. So we see that each process um, is the customer of the preceding process in this case that each process receives input as required by the process itself and that each process produces results as output and thereby creates value. This brings us to the end of video clip 5.1 in which we looked at organizing process models. We um, discussed that processes are conducted to provide results both on the high level of the company on the level of the organizational business processes, but also on the level of the organizational business processes. Therefore, processes are in a supplier-customer relationship, where the supplier creates value, creates output, and the customer uses this output as input to produce output to um, its, um, its uh, customer. Um, requirements always are, are always defined by the customer process, and there's also, there's not only an internal view, but or not only an external view, but also an internal view. Supplier-customer relationships also exist between processes of different companies.